know the difference. Torah being the word, the spoken word that Father Yah passed down to the people of Israel from Mount Sinai. And then he came and he put it in the hearts of his people on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Shavuot, and gave us the indwelt spirit and said the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit, the set apart spirit would teach us and guide us into all truth. And then there is Halakha. That's a way of doing things. That's a way of carrying out the Torah. That's a way of a lifestyle. Each of our homes, our families have halakha. There's things that we do in our home and we, they, we do them. Sometimes we don't even know why we do them because great grandma or great grandpa set the things in motion. And that's what we do every year or every morning or every once a week or at the dinner table. There was a halakha in the Cutter family that when we sat down to the dinner table, we all had to recite a Bible scripture. And we couldn't say when we were really little, the little ones could do Jesus wept. But as you got older, if you tried Jesus wept, you might get backhand by my daddy. Oh, no, 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 excuse me, you're too old for Jesus wept. Go find a scripture. And you couldn't use your, your Bible at the, at the table. So this scripture had to be ingrained in you. And he was doing something very special that I, I praise Father Yahweh for my, my father and all that he instilled in us from little children. That we had to memorize that and it became part of you. Thank you, Father Yahweh, for an upbringing whether we knew it or not, in the Torah. So I praise Father Yahweh for that. So Halakha, that's what Halakha is. So we're looking through this series at what really is Torah and what really is Halakha. So we go into the Halakha of, um, of our Jewish, European Jewish community and we go on to the halakha of the Christian church. And so we just talk about it and discuss what is Torah? What does Father actually say to us as law, commandments? And what is man saying so far as their laws and commandments? Do you know the difference? It's extremely important for us as people of Yahweh to know the difference. What is Halakha and what is Torah? And that's one of the things when we first came into this walk in 2001, we were busy trying to find out what was Torah and what was Halakha? What was man's law and what were Yah's laws? So as we came further into the walk and as our walk with Father Yahweh deepened, we found out that there were things that we were doing that was simply halakha. We could decide to keep them. If they were good, a lot of them we do. When the Shabbat comes in, the Kiddush that we do, and we bless each other and we bless our children and say, may you be as Ephraim and Manasseh. May you be as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And we added, and may you be as Ruth and as Boaz. Blessings of Israel. That's a good halakha. So we get that. Other halakha, we say, yeah, we don't have to do that. That's halakha. So we're going to go into halakha today. And I saw something, it's kind of dry humor, but I kind of laugh at things that some people don't laugh at. Um, because I find it funny. I really like dry humor. But here we have a lot of times within the European Jewish community, you have levels of, of, of teaching the Torah. And when you get into the halakha, you have rabbis who are trying to decide, you know, anything that is um, done in excess is not good. 
If you eat in excess, that's not good. If you drink water in excess, you know you could drown if you drink too much water. Your body can be poisoned by the very thing that it's made of. You drink too much. If you drink too much, alcoholism. You drink a little wine, it's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. When you find yourself drinking wine with every meal of the day, every day of the week, you might have a problem. <laughs> excess. You can even work out too much. There are certain exercises that you should not do. If you're a weight, if you're a weightlifter, you have to balance how you're lifting those weights because you need to work on certain muscles different days. You need to give your muscles a period of time to rest and then you get more of a, 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 a better quality workout. Even when you, you, when you work out, and I guess I didn't really talk about that because I like working out, but you don't want to do the same workout every time, every day. You want to mix it up. You want to do your weights one day. You want to do your aerobics the next day. You want to do some strength training. Then that maybe the next day some, uh, you know, uh, Pilates, strengthening, core strengthening. And then you get a better workout. You get more of it's, it. It's more of a quality workout. So what um, the uh, Jewish community or European Jewish community, what they, they do a lot of times is they will sit down and they'll decide, okay, and this particular cartoon, they're trying to decide about the usage of the internet. Any, you should not stay on the internet 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. That's in excess. So, this little cartoon, it says, Debating the subtleties of internet usage. So you have this little man who has gone to the rabbi and he says, but if the audio book is first downloaded into my wife's computer and then I upload it to my iPad, does that matter? The other little man is feverishly on the computer laptop saying, I know just the message board to consult. So they're trying to figure out well, how much is it too much usage for if you're downloading and getting audio books opposed to reading uh, books yourself. So he's trying to figure out, well, does it really count if I download it from my wife's computer? It's not really my computer. So anyway, okay, it's, it was funny to me, I thought. Anyway, so we're gonna get into the commandments. All right. Had a very interesting conversation with a person. You know, one of those conversations when you say, hmm. Well, this was an interesting conversation. And this is what was said to me. Yeshua, she said Jesus, made new commandments. And this was my reaction. Huh? 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 Oh! <laughs> what? Uh uh. Those were all my reactions. Yeshua made new commandments, and I didn't know about it. I didn't read that. Where is that in the Brick Hanashah? Where is that in the new covenant? So, y'all know for me, teachings are always from questions or conversations that I have. So we're gonna start off with how truth is established. You all know this is my stance, this is my foundation. I don't care if I am in a midrash with people, I don't care. If I'm in Midrash with other leaders and they start throwing stuff out there, look, you can only find that one place in the scripture. Where's your witness? How is truth established? So let's look at how truth is established. The first one, Deuteronomy 19.15. And if you can see it, read it out with me. 
one witness does not rise up against a man concerning any crookedness or any sin that he commits at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses a matter is established hallelujah uh oh okay why did that bounce out okay that was deuteronomy 17 15 it said the same thing matthew now we're going to the brit of uh, the new covenant renewed covenant matthew 18 16 says but if he uh oh am i reading but if he does not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word might be established. Then 2 Corinthians 13, 1. This is the third time I am coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word shall be established. So what, where are they quoting this from? Where is Matayahu and where is Shaul? Where are they quoting this from? We just read it from the Torah in Deuteronomy 19 and then Deuteronomy 17. Well, as a matter of fact, let me go back there so you all can get that one. That one bounced right on out. Okay. Deuteronomy 17 and 6. At the mouth of two or three witnesses shall he that is to die be put to death. He is not put to death by the mouth of one witness. This is something that our, our, our Constitution upholds. That's why you have juries. Because they say at the mouth of two or three witnesses, you have the jury, then you have the judge. You have the witnesses that come in. It has to be by the mouth of two or three. And then the judge then from what the jury, the witnesses, and also from the law, when they come together, then he makes a decision on what extent of the law he's going to give, depending on the result of or what happened concerning this crime. So as we see this, let's go back, forward, input, input, output. Matthew, 2 Corinthians 13. There we go. They are quoting from the Torah. Deuteronomy 19, Deuteronomy 17. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, truth is established. So if people come and say, well, Paul said blah, 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 blah. Okay, where is your witness? That's the first thing that you should say. Where are your witnesses? Because there has to be at least one more. Um, well, all word is got, uh, 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 uh. All word is established and confirms itself with the two or three witnesses, period. And sometimes when people have, um, um, you know, an analytical mind, they're reasoning in their mind. Absolutely, they're reasoning. Now there's others that you probably just want to walk away once you say that because it, it'll take a few days for, that, for them to get it. So let's look at the new commandments. Now what I did, of course, after I spoke to this person, immediately I went to the scripture and started searching. I put in new commandments. Nothing came up. <laughs> new commands. Nothing came up. I'm like trying to, oh, where is, and if someone is teaching this person this, I'm thinking to myself, how? Why do we accept teaching from people and not go into the word ourselves to confirm it? But we will take words from whoever because we think they have some kind of not letters behind their name, whether they do or not. Hey, I could buy a doctorate degree online. Absolutely. 
I could send somebody $2,500 and they would send me and I would be a doctorate, doctor of letters. And then I'd come in here and say, okay, you all can no longer call me Rabbis. Now you have to call me Dr. Rabbis. <laughs> Dr. Rabbis. I mean, it's it, so degrees behind or letters behind people's name, are they important? Yes, they are. I work at an institution of higher learning. That's what we do. So it is important. But is it important so far uh, beyond the point of you studying for yourself? No. We have to be able to look at the word and read it for ourselves. So I took kind of, with this concept and with this teaching, I kind of took a different um, journey. Um, and it might look a little confusing, but I'm gonna try to bring it all together at the end, hopefully, or in the next few slides. Now the next couple of slides are gonna seem like they don't have much to do with Yeshua making new commandments. But it's building up to a place where we understand that Yahweh says, I am Elohim, I do not change, okay? So let's look at Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 10. And it says, what has been is what shall be. What has been done is what shall be done. There is no, what's the next word, y'all? New. new new matter under the sun is there a matter of which it is said see this is new it has all it was here already long ago if I don't know it and I haven't been exposed to it it doesn't mean that it's new it just means I haven't been exposed to it <clears throat> but if I'm, I'm going to, I mean, a person would have to be, I guess there are people who think like that because we, you know, people think differently. And it's inter interesting how people um, disseminate information. Um, but just because I don't know a fact does not mean it's new. It just means I haven't been exposed to it, and I don't know it. So it'd be ludicrous for me to say, I didn't know there was an eighth note in music. Is there an eighth note in music? Okay, see, I didn't, I, I don't, I know nothing about music. All I know how to do is sing and play the radio and Pandora. That's the music that I know about, okay? so. There's an eighth note in music, but if I don't know that, because I have not been exposed to that, I can't walk around and say, there's no such thing as an eighth note. Yes, ma'am, there is. You t yes. So, starting from this point, Ecclesiastes, who was, uh, who was called this, this man, this king, Shalom, or Solomon, was called the wisest man. He was uh, the, the uh, third king of Israel. And he, at this point, was saying that everything other than the keeping and the obeying of the Torah of Yahweh was vanity. It's all vanity. This is a man who had lived his life with how many wives and 700 concubines he had one. 200, 400, 300 wives and 700 concubines. He had land. Look, he didn't ask for all the wives. I don't know what man would ask for that many wives in his right mind. I don't know. Okay. But he was given all those wives because lands, different people were trying to bring up, make peace with Israel. So in making peace, you would have kings that would say, take my daughter. And it would be a big thing. My daughter is married to King Solomon, the wisest man over in Israel. So he ended up with all these wives and all these concubines, but they had peace in his time 
there was peace. But he said, there is no new matter under the sun. Is there a matter of which it is said? See, this is new. It was here already long ago. Were there computers in the Garden of Eden? Were there computers in the Garden of Eden? That's an easy answer. Y'all know there were no computers in the Garden of Eden. Now, was the knowledge of building a computer in the Garden of Eden? Absolutely. The knowledge was there. All we are seeing now, um, back, um, all we are seeing now, I'm trying to remember to, to finish statements. I, I understand that. I, I realize when I hear myself, I don't do that a lot. I just jump into other thoughts. My husband tells me that all the time. So what we have to look at is that their all knowledge was given at the time that Father Yahweh breathed into the nostrils of Adam. All knowledge, nanotechnology, they had no idea of nanotechnology 40 years ago. A computer 40, 50 years ago was the size of this whole room. That was a computer. Now, before the electrical computer came around, you know what a computer was? A person. I compute numbers. So I'm called a computer. So now we went from people being computers to computers the size of this room to computers that are your cell phone. Watches. I mean, that's nanotechnology. That's on the smallest level of being able to handle huge amounts, blocks of information in the smallest area possible. Was that in the garden? Was the knowledge of it in the garden? Yes, because Father Yahweh he is, it was, and is forever. All that he is, all that he was, that's all that he is forever. So that's why Solomon is saying, there's no new matter under the sun. Who can say this is new? It was already here long ago. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 and 10, input, output. So. Looking at these new commandments, I looked at, at, at that Ecclesiastes seeing nothing new because um, I'm looking for something new, okay? So um, I'm going in, I'm trying to find something new so that um, when I, if I ever speak to this person again that, uh, or anyone else who says Yeshua or Jesus made new commandments so we don't have to follow the antiquated old commandments. We're not under that anymore. Now we have new commandments. So still looking at these commandments, I looked at that and I said, well, let's go into and see. Well, uh, since she was referring to Yeshua, she was referring to Jesus uh, making these new commandments, then there's got to be, if I can't find where he says He's making new commandments. And then we know that Yeshua is the essence, the pure essence and esteem of Father Yah in the earth. Then I'm going to go back to the prophets and the original covenant and see if they say that there's something new, some new commandments that Yahweh is saying he, he's uh, done. So I found Isaiah 45. 19 and Isaiah 45 23 and it reads 19 reads I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth I have not said to the seed of Yaakov seek me in vain I am Yahweh speaking righteousness declaring matters that are straight 
Then 23, he goes on to say, I have sworn by myself a word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. So that to me, every knee shall bow, every tongue swear. Then he goes on and he says in Isaiah 55 and 11, so is my mouth, is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly, somebody say certainly, certainly. accomplish what I send it for. This means that all that came out of the mouth of the Most High has been confirmed and solidified in the earth. It is continual and constant, never failing, never failing to accomplish its goals, never. So let's go and let's see. Notice that he says, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall swear. So Messiah made new commandments. Let's look at from, this is where you're gonna say, what in the world, how did you put that in there? It's gonna come. Looking at Philippians 2, 9 through 11, and it reads, y'all read it along with me. Elohim therefore has highly exalted him and giving him the name which is above every name. Stop right there. He gave Yeshua the name that is above every name. The name Yeshua meaning Yah is my salvation. Yah is my deliverance. Yah is my redeemer. Yah, surname of our, of our Elohim, Shua, means deliverance, means um, um, deliverer, means redeemer. So right there, a name, at the, at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow. So let's read it from there. That at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Yeshua Messiah is master to the esteem of Elohim the Father. Now, where did we just read that? Didn't we just read that in Isaiah? And who was saying this in Isaiah? The master, the most high. Yahweh was saying every knee, and he specifically said, let's go back there. He specifically said in uh, 45 and 23, I have sworn by myself <laughs> a word has gone forth out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return so that to me, who is me? Yahweh. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Okay. So now we see this being spoken in Philippians by Shaul. Philippians 2, 9 through 11, it says, Messiah Yeshua, Yeshua Messiah is master to the esteem of Elohim, the Father. And then let's, let's go on a little bit. I'm going to read Romans. Um, that's, that's taken specifically from Isaiah, the prophet. Isaiah 45, 23. So you're, if you're going to denounce Yeshua at, and his deity, if you're going to denounce him being the pure essence of Father Yahweh's esteem in the earth, then you need to de deny the prophets because the prophets speak of him being the pure essence that Yahweh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So let's look at uh, Romans 14. And 11 and 12, and it reads, For it has been written, as I live, says Yahweh, 
Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Elohim. Each one of us, therefore, now, this is um, Shaul now putting a piece on there and saying, each one of us, therefore, shall give account of himself to Elohim. Why? Because he said, not one, he said, his word has gone forth out of his mouth, and it shall not return to him empty. It's going to accomplish everything that is spoken. So, new commandments. We're looking for these new commandments. So, then I said, well, let's go back and let's look and see what are the commandments. So we know we go to the commandments, Exodus 20. Every, every Shabbat, we read those commandments. Every Shabbat, we say the Miyahasta. And we started off with uh, Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad, and you shall love. So we go through that whole thing. So let's read now Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Now Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21 gives us the commands. But let's look at Deuteronomy 6 and 1, starting there. And it reads, and this is the command, the laws and right rulings, which Yahweh your Elohim has commanded to teach you to do. Now, what was the reason for the Ruach Kakodesh to be indwelt? To teach us, isn't it? These are not trick questions, y'all can go ahead and answer them. Uh, the, the Ruach HaKodesh is called to do what? Teach us, lead, and to guide us. So Yahweh says here that Elohim has commanded to teach you. So that means that Elohim is also what? The Ruach HaKodesh. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to do in the land which you are passing over to possess. So that you fear Yahweh, your Elohim, to guard all of his laws, his commands, which I command you today. So there's two things that he's, ha he's saying. This is the reason that I gave you these laws, that you will fear Yahweh and that you will guard all his laws and his commands, and Son, which I command your you. grandson all the days of your life and that your days be prolonged. So what prolongs our life? The keeping and the obedience of the commandments of Yahweh. But not only that, that we fear, that we fear him. That's one problem that we have with our society today, that there's no fear. Everybody's talking about, you know, the um, young generation and young people and how you're doing this and how you're doing it. I have never seen in my life so many parents afraid, physically afraid of their children. Something that you raised, you birthed, and I'm going to be afraid of it. Probably not, but that's just me. That's my personality, and you know, I understand that, and not everybody is like me. And that's what happens when we start raising children, we allow them to do things that's wrong at the beginning. And then by the time they get up some size, they're too old to get out of it. So now the abuse is real, the struggle is real because you didn't do what you were supposed to do when they were little tiny people, when they were smiling and, and laughing and hit you. No, you were supposed to smile and pop them back and say, hit me again. You're going to be a baby patty. Don't do that. You don't hit your mama and you don't hit your daddy. You don't hit anybody. You don't get to do that. But that's what we first teach them. But then, after a while, they're age 16, and now they can really hit you. So now you're sitting up in your room, locking your door, scared of these kids that you feeding and clothing. Stop feeding them. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Stop feeding them. Yeah, you're gonna hit me. But there's no fear. There's no fear. 
Or like Mr. Lamar says, get a taser. Uh, go get a. <laughs> There's no fear of Yahweh anymore. There's no fear. So the children of Israel in the wilderness, there was a very present fear of committing a sin. Why? Because they, when they sinned, the wrath of Yahweh came down on them. But because we live in a society that is so lawless and just things just, it's getting more and more to where it, calling wrong right and right wrong, now, you know, children can walk around and feel like they're protected. Don't get me wrong. Children should be protected. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes children have to be protected from parents who are not fit parents. I get that. But guess what? I had a fear of my mother and father. Absolutely. Especially my mother, because she was a little crazy. She picked up stuff and hit you with it. She didn't even care. You fought as long as you wasn't bleeding and dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you got up, now get up and go in that room. Oh, can't hardly walk. You know, because you feel like your leg is broke. But, you know, there was a fear. And she, guess what? She didn't have to do that often. Yeah, you only need to get it one time and have that talk. I remember when we went in the store one time, Lori must have been about, Lori Wilson must have been about two years old. And uh, she just decided to take off in the store and start running, you know, going in between the, the clothes racks. And hiding, and I'm like, what in the world is job? I turned around, why I pulled her out from under, that's what you see, that's why, that's why Yahweh gives young women children. Because of today, I've probably been like, you know what, your heart is going to stay right up in there. <laughs> Somebody come and get you good. But I went and grabbed her out from under the, the uh, rack and popped her butt. I said, uh, we never going to have this conversation ever again. Right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. We never had to have that conversation ever again. But there's no fear and because there's no fear, we also have a government now that's not allowing parents to rightly chastise and to raise their children. So we're raising a whole society of people, and it's because, I get it, it's because you have so many parents that are unfit, and that will beat their children, you know, to death. They're unfit parents. And I'm sure there were unfit parents when I was coming along. But the thing that you understood and knew about your parents, or about my parents, that they loved you. Because number one, they did feed you. They did buy you food, and they did buy you clothes, and they kept a roof over your head, you know? And they, they talked to you when they needed to talk to you, especially when you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. But there's no fear in this society. And because there's no fear in this society, we have a whole society of people, children going up, running amok, and adults in their relationship with the Most High running amok, because there's no fear. But Father Yahweh is saying that you will fear him and that you will guard and do all of his commandments. And then he goes on in three, he says, and you shall hear, O Israel, and shall guard to do that it might be well with you, that you increase greatly, not just increase, but that you increase greatly as Yahweh Elohim of your fathers has spoken to you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Shema Israel, Yahweh, Elohenu, Yahweh, Echad. And then Exodus 20. One says, Exodus 20 and 1, and I'm going to read down. And it says, And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. We read this every Shabbat. And it's important that we read that every Shabbat. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. 
You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on, on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Six, but showing loving commitment to, isn't that beautiful? Loving commitment. I hate, uh, uh, the King James Version says loving kindness. But there's something a little more when a person says, you know, oh, I'm kind to you. It's a whole other thing when they say I'm committed to you. Um, loving commitment to those, to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring a, the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to naught. For Yahweh does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day. This is the fourth one. This is the bridge. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahweh, your Elohim. You do no, you do not, you do not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. He goes on to say, for in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the seventh day, the Sabbath day, and set it apart. Man, there's a blessing in keeping the Sabbath. People don't even realize, I tell you, the biggest deception was when Hasatan made people believe he didn't exist. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. When the enemy comes and tells us that we don't have to keep the Sabbath. That's a device of the enemy. Why? Because he knows there's a blessing on that. There's a blessing on that time, a blessing on that day. Then he goes on, now that Sabbath is the bridge from your relationship with Yahweh, then there's the bridge of the Sabbath, and now there's relationship with man. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. Now, he goes through this reading, we just read six. He also says this in Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 21. I am Yahweh your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You have no other mighty ones against my face. Now tell me why father keeps repeating this. <laughs> It's the same reason that a parent repeats over and over to their children instruction. It's the same reason that a teacher in school repeats over and over for instruction. Why? Because we believe that belief cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. This is why we read the Torah and the prophets and the renewed covenant every year over and over and over and over. We get to Tabernacles and we're reading the last Torah portion. Boy, when we get back from Tabernacles, in the beginning, Berashi bara Elohim. I mean, we start all over again. There's a beauty in that, in just reading. And I believe that Father Yahweh called us to do that so that we would, it would become part of us. So that it would become part of us. So he goes in Deuteronomy 5 and he repeats it all over again. And then he gets to 5 and 22 and he says, these words Yahweh spoke to all your assembly. Now the prophet Moshe is speaking. In the mountain, from the midst of the fire of a cloud and of thick darkness with a loud voice he added 
no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And then if we jump over to Deuteronomy 29 and 9, it says, therefore, you shall guard the words of this covenant and do them so that you prosper in all that you do. Who would not want to prosper? And it seems like with the church always talking about prosperity, it seems like they would want to keep the Torah because they're always talking about prosperity. Where Father Yahweh specifically says it's your wisdom and that you will prosper if you're obedient to it. So we're praying for our church brethren that their eyes will be open, that the blinders will fall, the, the scales will fall off their eyes and their ears will open to where they will shema and they will hear and obey. He goes on in Deuteronomy 29 and 10 and he says, all of you are standing today before Yahweh, your Elohim, your leaders, your tribes, your elders, your officers, all the men of Israel. Now let's not, let's not go to that place where a lot of people like to go. See, it was just the men. Only the men have to stand before Yahweh like that. We don't have to worry about the women. That's a part of European Jewish halakha. But look what he says further down. Deuteronomy 29 and 11. Your little ones, your wives, your sojourner who is in the midst of your camp. Mm -hmm. All of you are standing before me today. From the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, mm -hmm. your servants, so that you should enter into a covenant. Somebody say covenant. covenant. That's what this is about. The commandments is about a covenant, keeping a covenant, not expecting the blessings and being disobedient, but expecting the blessings because we are obedient. Yeah. Then he goes on to say uh, in Deuteronomy 29 and 12, so that you should enter into covenant with Yahweh your Elohim, into his oath, which Yahweh your Elohim makes with you mm -hmm. today. 13, in order to establish Establish you today as a people for himself. So Yahweh is establishing something. He's establishing this covenant with this group of people. And he goes on to say, and he himself be your Elohim. Who does not want to be for our, our God, Yahweh, our, to be not be our Elohim. He has spoken to you and as he has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, to Ishaq, and to Yaakov. What did he say in Isaiah 45? What did he say? My word has gone forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall not return to me void. Well, Okay, but Yeshua made new commandments. But we're looking at covenant that Father Yahweh has said. He has established them. Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, said this is, there's nothing new under the sun. It's been established from old. It's already here. It's been here from a long time ago. Then this is the, the part that I was getting to. Deuteronomy 29, 14, and 15. And it says, And not with you alone I am making this covenant and this oath. 15. But with him who stands here with us today before Yahweh our Elohim. So that means women, children, everybody. Not just the men, oh hero Israel. Not just the men, but women, children, everyone is going, all of Israel is going into covenant today. This is a commitment. I'm giving you loving commitment in this covenant today. 
to all of Israel, all of Israel, not just with who's standing here today, not with you alone. He says, but with him who stands with here with us today, before Yahweh our Elohim, as well as with him who is not here with us today. Those are your generations, Israel. They're not here yet. We weren't there yet. Our forefathers stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and came into covenant with the Elohim of Israel. Everybody did. So, not just with them, but with everyone who is not here, but does what? Accepts the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because notice further up, he says, even with the sojourners that's in your camp. So even if you say, being part of a church, of the church establishment, even if you say, oh, I'm not Israel, I'm a Christian, I'm a church. Well, that makes, it, Paul said that you were grafted in. So that means if you're grafted in, that makes you a sojourner within the gates of Israel. Which means Deuteronomy 29, 14, and 15 is established before time for you. Before you even took a breath. I know the plans that I have for you. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Yahweh said to them, I knew you in the womb. Isaiah, he says, uh, the prophet Isaiah says, and in my mother's belly you mentioned my name. Before you were even born, you were established as the house of Israel. Therefore, the covenant that was aforetime, before you even set foot on this earth, the covenant was set before you. If you accept the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you accept. Now, if you don't accept the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who accept the God, a claim to be of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's move on, because we're gonna, we got a little bit more to go. Um, let's look. What does Yah say about his commandments? What does God say about his commandments? So let's, let's look at that. We're gonna go to Deuteronomy, 28, 1, and 2. And it states, everybody reading with me. And it shall be, if you diligently obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, to guard to do all his commands, which I command you today, that Yahweh your Elohim shall set you high above all nations. It's just undeniable. 
So as we were looking at that, I looked at this word, this word overtake. I mean, it overtook me. <laughs> Literally. Because I sat there and I thought to myself, overtake. So I looked up the word and I thought, man, this word means to overtake something or someone. I mean, they have no choice in the matter. You are most times going to come up behind them and you're going to just, I mean, you, you don't even know half the time that it's coming. Overtaking, when you say they shall overtake you, it's like blessings just being poured out on you, coming from every way, every aspect of your life. Blessings. And that they come on you and they just take over your life. That's what overtake means. It takes over your life. And as we were looking at those generational curses, and we were seeing the curses that had overtaken our family, what makes a little girl or a young lady walk out the door? She's done no sin. She's young. She's known no man, knows nothing about her parents, nothing about, you know, any kind of um, sexual preference or anything like that. Walks out the door and boom, somebody grabs her, takes her, and rapes her. That's overtaking. The one thing that is of uh, this, this stack is from 19, okay, I graduated in 98, 1995. One out of three women in the United States have something in common, and that's rape. One out of three. One out of three. Not one out of 10. One out of 100. One out of 50. One. And they're being they're being raped or have been raped by a person they know who's close to them, someone in their family, someone who they trust, a neighbor, a uncle, a friend down the street. I mean, one out of three. I was walking from K Street going to lunch, and a bus just rolled up on the side. And that's what it said, statistic. One out of three. And I was standing there, and I guess, I don't know if anybody noticed, I was just standing there looking at this statistic. And as <coughs> we were doing that teaching on generational curses, and it said, and all of these curses in 28, then we're reading, we're reading the blessings now. Because this is what happens, what Yah says about keeping his commandments. But he says further down that if you don't, if you're not obedient to the, to the, the uh, commandments, if you do not guard, if you do not keep my commandments, he said that all these curses will come against you. You know what? People want to say, well, no, I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I believe in Jesus, and I blah, blah, blah. Well, why are things still happening to you? That at the mouth of two or three witnesses, truth has been established. The word has gone forth out of Father Yahweh's mouth, and it's not going to return to him void. It's not going to be vain. It's not going to just not happen. But it's going to do exactly what Yahweh commanded it to do. We're a people of this covenant. This is why we have one out of three women dealing with rape. Because we're people of covenant that's walking outside of the obedience 
of Father Yahweh. So let's go on. That was Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. Now Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and 45, and it says, let's read all together. And all these curses, there we go, shall come upon you, and they shall pursue you and overtake you. Stop. They will pursue you and overtake you. You know how it is. You ever been pursued by a police officer when you've been speeding? You think the police officer is just going to stop and say, oh, they're just going too fast. I ain't got time for that. No, they got stuff in their cars under their little engine. They're going to catch you. Don't let that Dukes of Hazard stuff fool you. That little show from Dukes of Hazard, they always get away from the police. Mm -mm. No, you won't get away. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> unless, you, unless it's dark and you dodge off somewhere and go get to sit in the rest area. <laughs> but now they have targeted things where they can go after you. They know when you make a turn. They, they are following you. They are pursuing you. And they overtake. Let's go on until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to guard his commands and his laws which he commanded you. We are a people of covenant. Exodus 25 and 6 and it reads, you do not bow down to them nor serve them for I Yahweh your Elohim am a jealous El. He said, I'm a jealous God. Visiting the crookedness of the fathers to the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to those who do what? Who love and do what? God and guard my, my guard my, no, Jesus made new commands. Hmm but showing love and commitment to those who love me and guard my commands. Let's go on, Deuteronomy 5, 28, 29. And Yahweh heard, now this, this, understand me, this is from the Torah perspective. This is from the Most High, the Creator, Yahweh's perspective, okay? Deuteronomy 5, 28, 29. Let's read it all together. And Yahweh heard the voice of your words when you spoke to me. And Yahweh said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. They have done well in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a heart in them to fear me and guard all my command. Always. When does always stop? Never. Always. Always. If you say you're going to always make up your bed as long as you have a room in this house. Now, if your child have a room in that house till they 75 and you 100, <laughs> Will they be still will they still have to make up their bed at 75? Yeah. Absolutely. Why? Because you said always. Always doesn't stop until you leave that house. Always doesn't stop until we stop becoming Israel. You stop believing in the one true and living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You stop believing in Yeshua, our Messiah, who bled and died on the cross, who was the esteem and the very essence of, the, of God in the earth. You stop believing in him, then guess what? Yeah, you are. You are no longer under that law. Absolutely. But if you say that you are of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of his Messiah, Yeshua, uh, it says always, so that it might be well with them and with their children. What's that last word? Forever. Forever. Now, when does that stop? Never. 
<laughs> forever. Forever. Let's go on. Leviticus 22, 31. And it says, and you shall guard my commands and do them. I am Yahweh, period. Mama says, wash the dishes, period. She didn't ask you nothing other than that. She said, wash the dishes. You know, wash the dishes. Yahweh saying, you shall guard my commands, period. And do them, period. Guard my commands and do them. Then he goes on at 26, 2 through 13. And he says, guard my Sabbaths and reverence my set apart place. I am Yahweh. If you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall do what? Give you rain in its season. What's gonna happen to the land if you don't get rain? Dry up. Then are you gonna have any wheat? No. Are you gonna have any vegetables? No. You know what? Guess what else you're not gonna have? Animals, because they're gonna all die out. And guess what's gonna happen to you? Because you need water too. You're gonna eventually die. And the land shall yield its crops, and the trees of the field yield their fruit. I mean, this is undeniably what Father Yahweh says when he says, do my, keep my word. This is what I said for you to do. And he says in 26, 9, and I shall turn to you and make you fruitful and shall increase you and shall establish my covenant with you. What is bad about that? that that's how you know that that is from the enemy. To tell people you don't have to keep you don't have to keep that old law anymore because it's blessings in it. <clears throat> there is a clause of blessings. Why in the world would anyone want to say, "Oh yeah, that's done away with, that's antiquated and old"? But people are saying that because they've not studied it and don't know that their blessings are in it. And they're standing up every Sunday. Oh, the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham. No, you don't get the blessings of Abraham. Mm -hmm. If you're not obedient like Abraham was in Genesis 26, you have to be faithful. You have to be obedient. We understand that in every other aspect of our life. Go to work. And your boss tell you, you show up in here one more time late, you out. I'm no longer under your law, boss. Walk up in there late the next day. <laughs> and then he'll look at you and say, you're right. You're no longer under my laws because you're fired. We, we take the most lucrative. It's ludicrous for us to think that we could have a God who is a God of order and have things so out of order because somebody tells us that we're no longer under a covenant, old covenant. But all Yeshua spoke of was the same covenant that was established in the beginning. And we're gonna look at that too. He says in 26 and 9, and you shall, Leviticus 26 and 9, and you shall eat the old supply. Look at this, this is a beautiful thing. And clear out the old because of the new. You're going to have so much. That's part of the overtaking when you're keeping, when you're obedient to the commandments of Father Yahweh. Now what happens, you know I talk a lot about uh, um, what happens within a family situation, but it's because this is a family. That's what the covenant and the household of Father Yahweh is about. It's about family. When he brought them to the foot of Mount Sinai, he was coming into covenant. I'm making this covenant with you. When we go into hospitals and have children and that baby cries out, guess what we have said? I 
am committed and in covenant with this child. Now, some people get up and walk away. There's people who have left babies. Am I not right? That have left babies in the hospital. They do it all the time. But if you stayed in that hospital, had that baby, took that baby home, then you're going to look at the baby and say, yeah, I'm not in covenant with you, so I don't have to do nothing else for you. What is going to happen to that child? Department of Health and Human Services will come and take you away in handcuffs. Unfit parent. But we can understand it from every other aspect of life. But when it comes down to the great creator of the universe, it's our so-called spiritual and religious thinking just goes amok. Just, it's just crazy all over the place. Then he goes on in 26, Leviticus 26 and 11, he says, and I shall set my dwelling place in your midst, hallelujah, and my being shall not reject you. You know, the reason that Father Yahweh covered Adam and Hava to deal with them, what did he say? When they committed the sin, he said he covered them with skin. He covered them. Why? So he could deal with them. He says here, though, that my being will not reject you. Why? Because you're going to be obedient to my word and not be disobedient. He goes on in Leviticus 26 and 12, and he says, And I shall walk in your midst, and I shall be your Elohim. This is commitment. And you shall be my people. That's taking that baby, wrapping him up in a little blanket, and putting him in that little car seat and taking him home. I am committed to you. Why? Because we're in covenant. And then he says, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from being slaves. We know about that. And I've broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. So, made me walk upright. There must be something about these this commandments, these commandments that's causing me to walk upright. He's saying if you guard, you guard, you keep, you keep my Sabbath, you reverence my set apart place. I'm Yahweh. You walk in my laws, you walk in my commands, and guess what I'm going to do? I am going to overtake you with blessings. What is What's bad about that? I'm going to overtake you with blessings. So let's go on. What did the prophet say about the commandments? We're going to walk it down. We're going to go down. We went from Yahweh about the commandments. We're going to look at the prophets. What did the prophet say about the commandments? Let's go to Yahushua. That's Joshua 22 and 5. Let's read it all together. Only diligently guard to do the commands and the Torah, which Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you to love Yahweh your Elohim and to walk in all his ways and to guard his commands and to cling to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your being. Nehemiah 1, 8 and 9, all together. Please remember the word that you commanded your servant Moshe. Nehemiah, look, Nehemiah is saying, I ain't doing nothing new. I just need for you to remember what you said back on Mount Sinai. But you know what? We can't say that if we're not walking in his covenant. <laughs> you don't get to say, I received the blessing of Abraham and in the same breath say, I'm no longer under the commandments. You don't get to do that. Because why? The curses are going to overtake you. Because now with your mouth, you have confessed something that your feet are not walking out. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're dealing with one out of three women. Rape, 
mishandled, abused. Because you know what? One thing Father Yahweh knows how to do is to get your attention. Get in a car, go down the street, the police officer stop you. He tell you to go and get your driver's license. You go to reach for it, he shoot you in the chest. Yahweh's gonna get your attention. Cause you're Israel. Cause you're in covenant with me. And you're walking out of covenant. And you're walking around bold and saying, I'm an Abraham, I get the blessing of Abraham, okay? Keep running your mouth. You can go out there and start talking about we shall overcome, black lives matter, black lives matter, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. It didn't work in the 60s, because we're still here. We're still in the same situation. It didn't work in the 60s. What we need to do is return to his covenant, yeah. return to his commandments. Be obedient to his laws. Why? Because they're blessings to us. We'll be able to live over here and not be killed. That's what will start happening. Because then Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will do what? Then he becomes the mighty warrior. Now I'm going to fight you. But right now, I'm going to use you, police officers, as I use the king of Cyrus, uh, King Cyrus. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to bring my people to me. So how many, how many people, how many sons and daughters have to be stopped and shot for no reason? How many for a broken taillight? How many? for selling their own cigarettes on the street corner. How many have to be killed before Israel wakes up and realizes that they're Israel and that that covenant, that commitment is forever, that it hasn't stopped, that it didn't stop under Yeshua, it didn't stop under the disciples. If it had stopped when Yeshua died, the disciples would not have kept the Sabbath and kept the feast days and kept culture and kept all the laws of Yahweh. They continued to do it. If it stopped after Yeshua died, was crucified, the disciples wouldn't have continued to do it. And we see all in the book of Acts where they were meeting in the synagogue when? On the Shabbat. What in the world? How do we get to Sunday? Where Sunday come from? other than Sunday worship with Constantine and his sun worship. That's where it comes from, sun worship. The day of the sun, Sunday. They didn't even, you know what? They didn't even hide it. They called it just what it was. And what do we do? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Sun is good, it's light, yes. It reminds me of God. We just jump on everybody's bandwagon. And understand me, I understand, that's a slave mentality. That's a slave mentality. If we go back and watch um, the shows, historical accounts, uh, the slave narratives, you know, did you get, the, get the book, the slave narratives, where these are actual slaves talking about their, their situation and what was going on in their lives at the time. Roots, we know, is another one, another historical account. 12 Years a Slave is another historical account. Uh, the Amistad is another historical account. We have numerous, that's more than two witnesses. To say that it happened, that's more than two. So you don't have to wait to read a histor uh, history book for that. You don't have to wait to give that to your children. You don't have to wait on that. It's there. But the reason that all of this is happening, what did Father Yahweh say? I'll put you on slave ships. Send you to the land that you know not of. Mm -hmm. You'll have children in vain. Your heart, your arms will long all the day for them. Why? Because they'll go off in slavery. You'll marry a woman and another will sleep with her. We saw that in Roots. Kizzy. She couldn't even get married. The slave master was still raping her historical accounts, and we're reading them in the Torah. Now Nehemiah goes on and he says, 
your um he says please remember the word that you commanded your servant Moshe now Nehemiah is speaking to Yahweh and he says saying if you trespass I shall scatter you among the people oh boy who is that we know that Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Ezra, uh, um, Zechariah, they were all of the um, exiled community that was taken out of Babylon, uh, uh, out of uh, the southern kingdom, out of Yehuda, into the Babylonian captivity. So now Nehemiah is saying, if you trespass, you told Moshe, that if you trespass, that if we trespass your Torah, if we do not keep your commands, I shall scatter you among the people. This is not just Nehemiah. We can see another group of people that were scattered throughout the nation. But if you shall turn back to me, guard my commands and do them. Though you were cast to the ends of the heavens. I shall gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen to make my name dwell there. Now, Haman was praying a prayer to Father Yahweh. And what did he do? He didn't think of anything new. He went back to the original conversation that Father Yahweh, the promise that Father Yahweh made to Moshe and to the children of Israel. Why? Because we're in covenant, covenant, covenant. Daniel 9 and 4 and 5, let's read it all together. And I prayed to Yahweh, my Elohim, and made confession and said, O Yahweh, great and awesome El, guarding the covenant and the loving commitment to those who love him and to those who guard his commands. We have sinned and did crookedness and did wrong and rebelled to turn aside from your commands and from your right rulings. You know what? That's what the church needs to be teaching now. Some preacher, somebody need to be reading this. Daniel. They can read Daniel when it comes down to um, prophecy of when Yeshua is coming back. Read Daniel 9 and 5. We have sinned and did crookedness and did wrong and rebelled. Rebellion is unto witchcraft. So now we got people running around in the church talking about money come to me now. That's witchcraft. Go in your boss's office and rub on the desk and he'll give you a raise. That's witchcraft. Keep his commands. And your boss will come to you and say, I just need to give you a raise. <laughs> That's overtaken. That's happened to somebody in here. Well, I'm getting ready to give you write your right a, a, a raising for you because you've been doing something. Okay, thanks. That's overtaken. I want you to apply for the supervisor position uh, and you're going to get it. That's overtaken. When you had no say, no word in it. I know of a job and so-and-so, so-and-so going down there, it's already yours. Yeah, we, okay, we're gonna do this just as a preliminary. This is just, we, you know, we'll, we'll just do this, but yeah, you, you have the job. That's overtaken. That's blessings that overtake you. But you have to know that you're in covenant. We're in covenant. Isaiah 48. And 18, it says, if only you had listened to my commands, exclamation wow. mark. Wow. Mm. Then your peace would have been like a river. Your righteousness like the waves of the sea. That's what the prophets say about the commandments. So let's let's um let's go on down because we're gonna we're still trying to walk through this here. 
Let's see what the psalm says about the psalms and the proverbs. I mean, and there were so many in the psalms and the proverbs that I had to choose. The whole 119 psalm says your word is life to me. I love it. It's like, I mean, you, this is like a love. I mean, when I am really feeling stressed at work, I'm going to tell you, I downloaded the whole Bible onto my drive at work. And I sit there and can just listen. And if I'm really in a place, I put on the 119 song. Oh, yeah, your word is a lamp into my feet, a light into my pathway. Your word is better to me than gold. Oh, your Torah is a, you know what? And after I finish hearing all of that, I'm good. So let's look at the, what the Psalms and the Proverbs say. Psalm 119 and 19. And it says, now I'm going to do several of them. It's 19, 21, 32, 35, 47. I am a sojourner in this earth. Do not hide your commands from me. You rebuke the proud, cursed ones who are strayed from your command. I run the way of your commands, for you enlarge my heart. I run the way of your commands. Make me walk in the path of your commands, for I have delighted in it. That I might delight myself in your commands, which I have loved. Then we have 48, 60, 66, 73, 86, 98. That I might lift up my hands to your commands, which I have loved, while I meditate on your laws. I have hurried and not delayed to guard your commands. Teach me good sense. That's the problem. Yeah. People don't have good sense because how can you want to deny the very thing that you say you're in covenant with? Teach me good sense and knowledge for I have trusted in your commands. Why? Because he said the Torah, your, the, your, the laws, this is going to be wisdom. This is going to be your wisdom. He goes on to say, your hands have made me and formed me. Make me understand that I might learn your commands. Hallelujah. All your commands are trustworthy. They have persecuted me with lies. Help me. What? Why is he screaming out and saying, help me? They have persecuted me alive. Your commands say that if anybody comes against me, you're going to fight my battle. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. So I'm keeping your commandments and your laws. They're trustworthy. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. For it is ever before me. Then... We're still in 119, 127, 131, 40, 143, 151, 166, 172, and 176. Therefore, I have loved your commands more than gold, even fine gold. Why? Because when you keep the commands, God will give you, Yahweh will give you some gold. He will give you what you need, what you desire, what you need to live by. I have opened my mouth and panted, for I have longed for your commands. Distress and anguish have found me. Your commands are my delight. You are near, O oh Yah, and all your commands are truth. Hallelujah. All your commands are truth. All your commands are truth. Yahweh, I have waited for your deliverance. Are we not waiting for his deliverance? And I have done your commands. But you see, he didn't say, he didn't say, I'm waiting for your deliverance. I'm, I'm being disobedient. <laughs> he didn't say, I'm waiting for your deliverance, oh, y'all, but I'm not going to keep those things. Uh -huh, to do that. He says, I'm waiting for your deliverance, and I have done your commands. My tongue sings of your word, for all your commands are righteousness. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. 
This is how we can talk to Yahweh when we're obedient. When we're obedient to his commands. He goes on to say, oh, that's all of them. Yeah, I told you. There was quite a few, so I don't want to put the whole thing down there. Now, we're going to finally get to what does Messiah actually say concerning the commands. So I told y'all that I really, I mean, I know this was a long route journey to get to this place. But, you know, that's kind of how my mind works. I want to exhaust every possibility. I want to exhaust everything. So I am absolutely sure that what I'm thinking is correct. And you know what we started out with? Yeshua, Jesus made new commands. Okay? So let's see actually what does the Messiah actually say concerning the commands. So let's hit it. Matthew 5, 17, 18, and 19. I love this scripture because I use it all the time. Do not think. What does that say? Don't think. Don't think. Okay. That would, and that's what's wrong with some people. They're thinking. <laughs> Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. The mere fact that he first starts off with, I did not come to destroy. How the heck would you, how in the world? <laughs> how in the world would you think that he would say, I did not come to destroy, but I came to bring an end to it? <laughs> <laughs> destroying is bringing an end. Let somebody bring an end to you. They have destroyed you. But he says, do not think I have not come to destroy, but to complete. So, brain, wow. So, that word complete doesn't really mean end, because literally, I'm going to tell you, this is why I stopped really using the Strong's Concordance. Because in the Strong's Concordance, it said that bring an end to. And I'm like, see? See that foolishness right there? And you mean your translators? Really? That doesn't mean to bring an end to it. That word complete does not mean that. So let's move. Let's keep um, moving. Let's move on. So he goes on to say in 18, for truly, I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, one yod, jot, or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Is the heaven and earth still here? Yeah. Still here. Okay. So the heaven and earth is still here. He says, not one jot, not one yo, not one jot, not one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah. That means, and you know what? And Yeshua is so awesome right here because Yeshua is saying, Yeshua is not even touching the Torah. He says, not one jot or one tittle. Where's a pen? Where's a marker? Can you bring me one of those markers? Because I have to do this. And uh, 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 Chris, show the board. Not one jot or one tittle. So Yeshua right here is not even touching the Torah. He's not even touching the Torah. He says not one jot or one tittle. So in the Torah, you may have, let's say, a hay. You have a hay, okay? That's in the Torah. That's a, a, a letter, okay? Means the breath of Elohim. That's breath. That's what a hay means. It means breath. It means air. So we say when you look at the hay, you think of what? You think of the whole, the, the, the set of our spirit, the world out of it. Okay? So, but Yeshua says something really plain here. He says, one yo or one tittle. Okay, well, let's erase this. Y'all, excuse me. He said yo. Let's use yo. Yo. Yo means the hand. Hand of Elohim. Yo. As in 
uh, not cough, which is like the work of the hand here, but yo actually means like this, like, you know, I'm gonna punch you, <laughs> yeah. Um, power, the arm, that's why it's written like that. It looks like an arm, a fist. So yo, being the hand of Elohim, he says not one yo or one tittle. Now I'm gonna show you what a tittle is. Say, you got a shin. Shin represents um, El Shaddai. Which is Yahweh, all sufficient one, or Yahweh almighty, the one who gives us all provision. So that shin, that's what that represents. But in the Torah, what you'll see on top of that shin, you'll see these little, say like they'll put a bunch of little balls. Little balls all at the top. These are called tittles. These little things. That's not even part of the Torah. But he says, until one of these little tittles, <laughs> yo, is the smallest. Alabet is the smallest letter in the alphabet. Smallest. That's why he uses that. He said not one yod, nor one tell, not one of the smallest letters in the alphabet, nor one of the little tittles that they put on top of the um of a letter. When they put the when the sages put those little tittles up there. The bob represents a, a sword or Zion. Let's say it's, let's say they're Zions. The Zion it represents those swords. So they would put Zions over the shin, which means El Shaddai, because he fights for us. So you got all those little tittles up there. And Messiah, he doesn't even deal with the with the letter itself. He says, not one yo, not one little tiny letter from the Torah, and not even one of the little tittles that they put on there. By no means will pass away from the Torah to all be done. And what's, what's going to all be done? Till it's all finished completely. The heaven and the earth has not passed away. The heaven and earth is still here. How do we know that? Because we're here. <laughs> That's not rocket science. <laughs> So you see, you see that that that's all still said. Then it goes on to say, whoever then, 519, whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands. Now this is Messiah. Boy, so one says he made new commands that I could not find in the scripture. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so. So every Sunday preacher who gets up and says we're no longer under the law. Here brother, sister, and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. And that word least is interesting. Because the word least there doesn't mean that you're going to be, it'll be just like one person. It means that you will not even be there. That word least literally means you're absent. But whoever does and teaches them, whoever does the Torah, does the commandments, because what does Messiah actually say concerning the commandments this is coming from the mouth of our messiah from it coming from the mouth of mashiach coming from the mouth of jesus coming from the mouth of yeshua hamashiach he says but whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens who would not want to be called great in the reign of the heavens. So let's go on and let's look at another witness. Messiah said, Matthew 19 and 17, input, output. And he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Elohim. 
But if you wish to enter into life, guard the commands. If you wish to enter into life, guard the commands. Sound like somebody don't want to live to me. Matthew 22, 37 through 40 says, And Yeshua said to him, You shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and great command. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hang all the Torah and the prophets. Now, this is where this young lady called herself bringing me to question. See, he only made two commands. He changed it. He changed it. He, he, the, 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 the Torah is no longer. We don't have to do it anymore. Jesus, he gave two commands. That you love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hang all of the Torah and the prophets. <laughs> so that's where that face went. <laughs> what? You just said that all of the laws, all of the commandments, all of the Torah, all of the haze, the yo's, the shins, all of the tittles, and the, all of that hangs on love Yahweh with all your heart and, your, and your, your neighbor as yourself. Well, that sounds like the commandments that we read every day, every Shabbat. But tell me what happens if you have a door and you have no hinges. You don't have any hinges. So the door is probably just standing up there to the opening. And it's probably gonna fall through. It's not gonna stay up there. You won't be able to, it won't be able to function as a door properly because you don't have it on the hinges, okay? So let's say the Torah is the door, okay? And that would make sense because Yeshua said, I am the door. He said in the beginning was a word, and the word was with Elohim, the word was Elohim, and the word was made flesh and dwelled among men. So that he's the word, he's the Torah, okay? So let's say Yeshua is the door, okay? And the hinges are love y'all with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Now, Get rid of the door. Do you need hinges?
to an open space and there's no door. Now that's common sense. But when you tell people, oh, see, there's only two laws. Love Yahweh as your, as, um, with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. <coughs> well, that means if you love him, you'll keep his commands. Number one, that's what he says. If you love me, you'll keep my commands. Isn't that what Yeshua said that all day long? You won't have any other God before him. You won't make for yourself a great image. You won't bring his name to nothingness if you love him. That's still a commandment, y'all. Come on now. I'm like, the Father, help us. Help, help. I'm, I'm like, help me to not go off on people. I mean, because it's just, it just doesn't make sense when you try to extract nonsense. Because all you're going to get is nonsense. Because that's nonsense to have hinges in an open place and there's no door. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. So if you take away the door, we've taken away the Torah, there's no door. So that means Yeshua doesn't have any commandments. There's no commandments. So they use this. This scripture has been used to say you only have to keep those two. But in keeping those two, how do you love Yahweh with, with all your heart? How do you love? How do you, how do, you do that? How do you love your neighbor as yourself? Don't steal from them. <laughs> Don't take their wife. <laughs> Don't take their land. Don't lie on them. Don't lie on them. Right. That's still Torah. That's still, those are still the commandments. You see how ridiculous it sounds and how ridiculous. And the thing that gets me, you will have intelligent people with PhDs, law degrees. I don't understand lawyers who go to Sunday church. I don't understand. You're a lawyer. That's your job. It's the law. And then you're going to go in a church and where a preacher says you're no longer under the law. You should be like, excuse me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's not right, right there. That can't be right. Because I'd be out of a job. Hmm. If there's no law. Because where there's no law, there's no sin. So what do you have lawyers for? What do you have judges for? What do you have juries for? What is all of that whole process for if we're no longer under the law? There's no need for that. Because there's no sin. If there's no law, there's no sin. Is there sin in the world? Oh, yeah. Thank you. So there's still law. So let's go on to these two commands. Hang on that. Then we have Mark 10, 19. You know the commands. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not rob. Respect your father and your mother. What is that? He says, Yeshua says, you know the commands. Does he say, I have new commands? Right there? Okay. He says, no, you know the commands. Do not commit adultery, do not murder. Those are the Torah. That's the Torah. That's the Torah. Mark 12, 29 through 31. And says, Yeshua answered him, the first of all the commands is, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh your, your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first command. And the second is like it, is, is, is like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So there we, there we go again. Those two are encompassing all of the Torah. So let's go on to John. John 14, 15, and 21. And it says, if you love me, you shall guard my commands. That's Yeshua. That's what Messiah actually says concerning the commandments. If you love me, you shall guard my commands. We've already established earlier that Father Yahweh's word has been established from the beginning. So
从未。